stock flow map right now. And you can use this again, I think, to get a, an understanding of the, uh, of the situation. So, um, you know, let's just assume that, um, you know, we've got a, a bathtub here in terms of CO2 in the atmosphere. And I'm going to use mapping mode. Let's just use mapping mode so that we can get through this. Um, and then we're going to have annual emissions going into that. So again, if you think of the stock of, of CO2 in the atmosphere as a bathtub that um, contains within it the uh, total amount of CO2 in um, billions of tons that are in the atmosphere, then each year's annual emissions is a flow that is added to that bathtub. So the inflow goes into the bathtub. Similarly, each year on the outflow side, I'm going to draw an outflow, there are removals. Sometimes this is referred to as sequestering. So this is annual. Let me just make this a little bit more specific. This is annual removals. And all of these are in billions of tons of carbon per year. So if you think about this bathtub in terms of what's going up and what is, uh, is going out of it, then what does it take for emissions uh, for the CO2 in the atmosphere, excuse me, to go up? And it turns out that it's just the fact that if this is going to go up, the reason it would go up is the annual emissions would exceed the annual removals. The um, concerning thing right now in terms of the annual emissions is that the annual emissions is expected to increase over time while annual removals is going to stay the same. So we're going to use this basic framework now throughout the course of this uh, rest of this webinar to discuss and highlight issues associated with climate change. So let me refer back to the top line. So there are four messages associated with climate change that we want to get across today. Four messages are we must not allow the CO2 emissions, CO2 emissions for burning fossil fuels to continue increasing as it has and as it, is, as it is expected to do over the next 90 years or so. Message two, the sooner growth in these emissions stops, the better the outcome. Every year we delay stopping growth, the outcome gets worse and worse in an exponential fashion. Message three, Emissions must actually become less than removals, the rate at which the CO2 is sequestered out of it. So in other words, back to the bathtub. The only way for the bathtub to go down is if this is less than the flow going out of it. So it has to drain faster than it is actually filling up in order for the CO2 in the atmosphere to go down. Message three, current popular agreements aren't sufficient, but Proposals are moving in the right direction. So there's hope. There is hope. Don't want you to walk away from today feeling like there's no hope. There's a proposal with potential out there on the table, and that is to reduce emissions to 80% below the 1990 global rates. Okay? So in order to get into to communicate these messages across, you know, we could do it just like I just did, which is to just list them as a bullet form. One of the things I'm going to show today is how we can use an embeddable SIM, something that you can share, something you can get to other people quickly, hopefully virally, in a way to communicate the messages. So this is a new technology that, uh, again, we're uh, demonstrating today for the first time. And as you'll see um, in all of the SIMs that I'm going to show that are associated with this technology, there's a little embed link in the lower right corner. And so this is the way a SIM like this would be shared with other people. Okay. So let's go to message number one. Message number one is we must not allow CO2 emissions from burning fossil fuels to continue increasing. So I'm now going to go over to Firefox, to my web browser, and I'm going to show a simulation that is ready to go. It's already up on a, the IC Systems website, and it's got in it um, a tab series here, a menu at the top that includes the name of the, uh, the indicator. In this case, we're looking at CO2 concentration in the atmosphere in terms of parts per million. Um, and you can click on things to get information about it. We can look at concerns about this. What, why is this trend a problem? We can look at causes. And then we can look at some choices, some policy choices. 
So again, we're going to communicate, first of all, the concerns. Why is this a problem? Now, I can either click this tab or you can just follow a progression by clicking the right button in the lower right. So there's actually a movie embedded in it, just like YouTube. So embedded in this sim, which you could share with other people, is a movie that, that will walk through the issues as I'm about to walk through them. The movie doesn't play all that well. It doesn't refresh well on the screen. So I'm going to go back to PowerPoint to do that. So the movie is the same as this movie here. So CO2 accumulates in the atmosphere. The globe gets covered like a blanket. This is occurring due to burning fossil fuels. And the concentration is projected to more than double um, in the next 90 years. As CO2 accumulates, it traps heat into the atmosphere. Again, this is you know basic uh, climate dynamics 101. But it accumulates and it traps heat. This will cause temperatures to rise. And global temperature is expected to increase by around 5 degrees or so Celsius in the next 90 years or so. And this increased heat can melt Arctic ice, raising global sea level. And sea level is expected to rise by a meter. Now, again, concerns. Again, this was a movie that would be playing. But the concerns associated with this are that increased temperatures and sea levels would lead to altering precipitation, drought, famine, displacement, people forced to move, disease. And for those worried about the economy, certainly this will impact the economy in very, very big ways. So that's the core concept, is that CO2 in the atmosphere behaves like a bathtub. And again, the concerns are on the previous slide here about all of these issues associated with it. So if we can just communicate bathtub dynamics to folks, we might be able to avert and to mitigate at least, um, if not avert all of them, but at least mitigate some of the potential issues that are associated with this screen here. So back to the uh, back to the sim here. So the movie would have played on this screen, and here is an opportunity to explain bathtub dynamics. So again, I want to get this idea of bathtub dynamics across, and we can use a feature called storytelling, which is in the Stella and I think software, but it's also available in net sims and in these embeddable sims. So I'm going to walk through the dynamic, or again, the, uh, the structural cause here, again, by bathtub dynamics. So the increase in sea level is going to be driven by melting Arctic ice due to increased global temperatures. The increased concentration of CO2 traps um, heat in the atmosphere. And this CO2 is coming from the accumulation of tons of carbon in the atmosphere, this bathtub. Again, we can teach bathtub dynamics. We can show the bathtub, show that the inflow here of CO2 going into the bathtub, the outflow coming out. And here is a nice dynamic associated with what's actually occurring. So I'll just click this off. As you can see, the annual emissions of CO2 in billions uh, and carbon in billions of tons per year is to go up to this height over time whereas the removals or sequestering out is at this level. Obviously, initially the gap between them is, is, is too large because the bathtub right now is, is actually growing. But what's worse is that in the next 90 years or so, projections are that we might see five or six times greater gap between inflow and outflow than we are currently experiencing. And already we're seeing this acceleration of CO2 in the atmosphere. So this is of great concern, that the fact that it's, the gap is positive, more is going in than is being removed, and worse yet, the gap is getting larger. All right, so you can then, um, after you've explained this, you can have people watch the simulation and see the, uh, the impact. So we're going to run it here. And the, uh, the graphs fill out. And you can see, the uh, again, the causal connections, the relationships between the different, uh, the different factors here. All right, so this is a very simple, uh, again, simulation that you can share. People can start to viscerally understand the relationships here, viscerally understand bathtub dynamics. The next question is, of course, if there's concerns and this is what's causing it, what can we do about it? What are the choices? And you can let people experience 